It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl today. Two outstanding elementary schools here to play our game. One of whom will go on to play Montpelier Elementary for the chance to move off to the semifinals. Play along with us today and test your own science IQ. No, you can do it. Let's meet first the team from Beacon Heights Elementary School. Would you please welcome to the program Jaime Martinez, Omar Pierre, and Kaylin Moore. And from Judith P. Hoyer Montessori School, here they are, Alex Krieger, Stephen Most, and Elisa Sharma. And now here are the categories of questions we use on the Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. And here in the Science Bowl, our game board reflects the difficulty level of the questions. The easier ones on the left worth 5 and 10 points. Tougher worth 15, 20. The toughest of them all worth 25 points. Our team start out at 50 points apiece. We never deduct any points for incorrect answers. At the end of the two rounds today, as we were just saying a few moments ago, one of these two good-looking teams will come back to play Montpelier for the chance to move on in our competition. In this, our 34th year of competition in Prince George's schools. Let's go over and make sure everything works properly before we start. Beacon Heights, Omar, would you try your buzzer? Thank you, young man. Good luck to you and to Jaime and to Kaylin and Stephen. How about the green teams? A-OK -okay as well. Good luck to you, to Alisa and to Alex. All I have to say is congratulations. You've already won. You're here representing your schools, and we hope you have a good time here today. Let's get start started. We go alphabetically B before J, so Beacon Heights and Omar, let's play the bowl. Green things for 15. Three things for 15 points. Teams, the next time you get a splinter, if you find a banana peel, wrap it around your finger, if that's where the splinter is, and these e initial chemicals will help to break down the splinter inside your finger. What are those e initial chemicals called that can break things down? What you got, Beacon Heights? Enzymes. Enzymes, that's right. Jaime, thanks for your assist. Nice job, young man. Go red. Um... Zoo Parade for 15. Zoo Parade for 15 points. Teams, Aesop's fable about the dangers of laziness starred what two insects? What two insects? The fable of why it is bad to be lazy. All right, Beacon Heights. Um, crickets and ants. Good try, good try. Not quite. Judith P. Hoyer. The two insects illustrating the dangers of laziness in that Aesop fable. Crickets and grasshoppers? <laughs> you kind of canceled each other out. It's the grasshopper and the ant. The grasshopper and the ant. All right, no points. Let's try again, Omar. Um, why is it those are dead? Go ahead. You pick. That's your job. Um, body system for 10. Pick one. Body system for 10. Okay, <laughs> and we can't ring it yet. You'll get the hang of it. It takes okay. a while. I know you haven't done this before. Say it again, which one do you want? Um, body system for 10. Body system for 10 points. All right, teams. The artist Vincent Van Gogh famously cut one of these sense organs off his head. Oh, Judith B. Hoyer. Oh, um, brain? No, not his brain. Beacon Heights, Vincent Van Gogh famously cut one of these off his head. Ear? His ear, yeah, he cut off his ear. Yeah, remember, and he, he mailed it to some, oh, she was kind of sick. Great artist, but had some problems. Go red. Jaime, thanks again for your help. Go ahead. Oh, well, <laughs> Dateline Science for 15. <laughs> we'll, we'll get this down. Dateline Science for 15 points. All right, the red team is chosen. Here's your question, Dateline. All right, 
There was a man by the name of Percy Spencer long ago who was walking past in his lab a magnetron. He had a chocolate bar in his pocket and he noticed that it melted. Huh, he went on to invent this appliance that we find in practically every American kitchen. Oh my! Microwave? A microwave, yeah! Yeah, that melted chocolate bar. Made a mess of his shirt, but boy, he got rich. Go red. Okay, now don't push the buzzer first. Just give me <laughs> yeah. a category and a number, all right? Go ahead. Um, body systems for 15. Body systems for 15 points. Teams, <laughs> some kids are over 20 years old and they're still going to this kid doctor. Judith P. Hoyer. Pediatrician. Pediatrician, that's it, good. All right, now you got some points. Go green. Um, Science potpourri for 10. Science potpourri for 10 points, teams. Uh, the reason why whales and dolphins don't drown while they're sleeping is they keep one hemisphere of this organ awake at all times. Um, Omar. Their lungs? Not their lungs, no. One hemisphere of this organ is kept awake at all times, which is why whales and dolphins don't drown when they're sleeping. Um, blowhole? Their brain, their uh. brain. They keep half their brain awake, the other half can sleep. Okay, go again green. Um, Supre for 10. Supre for 10 points. All right, teams. Uh, well, most elephants today have very large ears. It helps them to get rid of excess heat. These extinct relatives of elephants had very tiny ears so they could stay warm and reserve their heat. Mammoths. Hoyer? Mammoths. Mammoths, that's it. Okay, go green. Um, Dateline signs for 10. Dateline for 10 points. All right, teams. This famous, famous French landmark was originally built to help broadcast news, to serve as a weather station, and also as an astronomical station. Name it. Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower, that's right. Thank you, Alex. Thank you for your help. Go Hoyer. Let's get physical. <clears throat> Let's get physical for 10. Physical for 10 points. That'll put you in the lead. Look at that score. 90 Beacon Heights. Judith Hoyer, 85. This is the 10 point question. Let's get physical. Teams, lemon juice, like a lot of these other types of chemicals, tastes sour and has a pH less than seven. What do we call that group of chemicals? Judith P. Hoyer. You mean nitrogen. And you should be talking among yourselves in case I come to you. Kaylin, let's mix it up over there. Give your ideas to Omar. Judy, Judith P. Hoyer? All right. What pass kind of it out, Lisa. Yep. I didn't say to pass it. Nitrogen. Nothing. No, not nitrogen. Beacon Heights? Chemicals that taste sour have a pH less than seven, like lemon juice, are called acids. Acids. Go again, green. Oh. The buzzer says we've come to the end of the first round, and our score at this juncture is Beacon Heights 90, Judith P. Hoyer 85, and we'll be back with round two in just one moment. Don't go away. And welcome back to Science Bowl. Thank you for playing along with us today, and uh, we have six great players here today. Uh, one of them has been here before. He's actually... Uh, Back for a second time, but most are new players. Let's meet the team from Beacon Heights. And Omar, tell us about Beacon Heights. Who's your principal? Uh, Ms. Walker. Absolutely. She's out there. I know she's a big fan of this team. And who's your coach? Uh, Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. This is his first year, and he's a great coach because I think you've got about nine people on this team here. And I know you've all been competing against each other. You're representing the whole team very well. Uh, tell me, uh, can you give me the first names of their alternates, of your alternates? Would you know who they are? Um, my alternates are Hector, Victoria. Um, Help them out, Kaylin and Jaime. Um, Annalie. Mm -hmm. uh, Malaman. Uh, Trinity and Ashley. All right, we'll bring them all out with Mr. Brown in a few moments here. Tell me about Beacon Heights. It's a great place. I was there a few years ago when you got a brand new library, and it just looks magnificent. What do you like about the school, Omar? Um, I like that the teachers are very dedicated to what they do, and they have a good sense of humor. <laughs> Boy, that's a great commercial. Yeah, I mean, if you're not dedicated, uh, you shouldn't be there. And if learning's not fun, why bother? You know, you're not going to remember anything. You're very well-spoken, young man. What do you want to do someday? 
Uh, one day I want to create kind of like chapter books for um, children. Yeah, so you're going to be you're going to be a communicator. Yeah, you've made a good start here. Kaylin, tell us the Kaylin story. What do you do in your spare time? I like to play with my friends and family, and I like to help like my dog a lot. Yeah, you told me about your dog. Yeah, what's your dog's name? Sparky. Yeah, how long have you had your dog? Uh, since third grade. Wow, wow. Do you? Uh, are you the main person who takes him for a walk and takes care of him? No, my sister Your is. sister does. Okay. What do you want to do someday? Um, I want to be a veterinarian. Oh, you're getting lots of practice with your dog. Yeah, and you've gone to the vet with the dog, so I think that's a good uh, ambition. How about you, Jaime? You know a lot about science. How do you know so much science? Well, uh, so sometimes in my spare time, uh, I go on to YouTube and watch educational videos. Yeah, boy, that's a great place to go. And you're a YouTuber yourself, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. What do you want to do someday? Uh, I want to become a famous comic maker. Yeah. Famous comic, not just a, co a famous comic maker, right? Yeah. You want people to remember your name. Or well, you're making a name for yourself here today. You're playing a really good game. You keep it up in the second half, all right? Judith P. Horia, nice to have you here. Steve, welcome back. Yeah, you were here before, mm -hmm. and you got the, you got the confidence that comes with experience. Tell us about Judas P. P. Hoyer. It's a Montessori school, yeah. Yep. Can you explain to the audience that might not know what is Montessori? What does that mean? Montessori is not like sitting at a one-person desk. We are able to move around and use materials to help us learn. Yeah, it's a good method. Uh, Maria Montessori, a woman a long time ago, invented this, and uh, we have a couple Montessori schools here in the county. Tell us who your principal is. Miss Bybee White. Absolutely, and she's got, she's got so much energy. When I'm around her, you know, I want to go back to school. She's just a great role model. And who's your coach? Miss Strong. Miss Strong, former candidate for Prince George's Teacher of the Year. Um, also, an awful lot of energy. Thank you, Cheryl, for all you've done. Any alternates on your team, Steve? We have Justin. Yeah, he'll be out in just a few moments. Tell me the Steve story. What do you want to do someday? I want to be an athlete. An athlete. Now, you want to play football, don't you? Yes. Yeah. And Alex, you want to be a famous soccer yeah. player or? Yeah. Basketball. Basketball, yeah. Why'd you want to be on this show, Alex? Because I enjoy science and it's one of my favorite subjects. You're in the right place. You're in the right place. What do you do in your spare time if you're not playing sports? Playing video games, reading, and watching YouTube. Yeah. Well, you're obviously a good reader. You know a lot of stuff, and it's, it's coming out here today. Keep up your good playing. And Elisa, nice to have you here. She wants to be a culinary expert, a.k.a. a great chef. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. What do you like to cook? I like to cook with my mom, so sometimes when we have dinner, I can help her make, like, traditional dishes. Yeah. What kind of traditional dishes? I don't exactly know the names of a lot of them, but sometimes when my grandma makes uh, this thing called rice noodles, for short, for chow feng, yeah. I can help her make the sauce and stuff. That's wonderful. And you know, cooking and science go together. There's a lot of science that goes into cooking. Uh, you've got to understand temperature and ingredients and all of that, so um, it's a good, uh, good combination. Your love of science and food. Let's get back into the game. Judith P. Hoyer is at 85, Beacon Heights 90. Are you ready for round two? Yes, let's do it. All right, last correct answer came from Steve. Let's go, green team. Guys, yes. Go ahead. They're all getting ready to grab. Um, yeah. Omar, things, he's got that handled over green here. Green things for 10. Green things for 10 points. Teams, this plant, which for many years was the main agricultural crop here in Maryland, famously contains nicotine. Tobacco. Go. Judith P. Hoyer? Tobacco. Yeah, you're all yelling it out. Just wait till we recognize you. I like your enthusiasm, but just wait till we recognize you so we can get the shot. Okay, tobacco it is. You're in the lead by five. Steve? Super 8 for five. Super 8 for five points. Teams in the movie Zootopia. Flash, the sloth who moves slowly. He worked for the DMV. Not the Department of Motor Vehicles, but the Department of what? Vehicles. What did the M stand for, Steve? What did it stand for? Moving vehicles? No, no. Remember the category Zoo Parade? Flash in Zootopia. He was at the DMV. It wasn't the Department of Motor Vehicles. It was the Department of what vehicles? What did the M stand for? God. Say it, Jaime. Mammal? You got that right. The Department of Mammal Vehicles. You got it. I knew you had it in you. Go red. Um, 
Zoop parade for 20? Zoop parade for 20 points. Teams, what F initialed adjective means a wild pig or a wild dog or a wild cat. What F um. initialed adjective describes a wild animal? Feral. Yeah, that's it. Feral it is. Good. Omar, go. Um, let's get physical for 15. Physical for 15 points is a multiple choice question. Teams, when seaweed starts to decay, it stinks like rotten eggs because is the gas given off carbon monoxide, nitrous oxide, or hydrogen sulfide? Which of those hydrogen three, sulfide. Hoyer? Hydrogen, hydrogen sulfide? You got that right. That's that rotten egg smell. Yes, sir. Good. Go. Um, Science potpourri for 15. Potpourri, 15 points. Teams, we now know, sadly, that Narcan is the antidote for people who overdose on heroin or fentanyl or oxycodone. All those kinds of drugs are known as these. They are all known as these kinds of drugs. We hear about them every day. People are overdosing on what kinds of drugs? What you got, Steve? Medicine? Not medicines, no, they have a particular name. Fentanyl, oxycodone, heroin, morphine. These are all what kinds of drugs? Um, antibiotic? Opioids, opioids, opioid addiction. Go again, green. Um, let's get physical for five. Physical for five points. Teams, your question is as follows. There are 27 possible combinations if you play rock, paper, what? Scissors. Omar. Scissors. Scissors, yeah, good, go, red. Um, green things for 20? Oops, sorry. <laughs> You're picking it up from him. <laughs> All right, whose question is the red team? What um, did you say, Omar? Green things for 20? Green things for 20 points. All right, teams. You know, here in Maryland, it is no longer legal to produce hot meal containers or hot coffee cups made of this substance. They're now going to use a plant substance called cellulose. What is that substance that's derived from petroleum products that is now bad for the environment and illegal. Omar. Um, styrofoam? Yeah, it is styrofoam. Jaime, Jaime, you're on your game today. Go, red. Um, uh, Dateline science for 20. Dateline for 20 points. Teams, there was a French chemist by the name of Lavoisier and he founded two gases. He found hydrogen and this gas, which we need for something to burn. You need this gas for something to burn, Hoyer. Nitrogen? No, not nitrogen. Beacon Heights, Lavoisier, he founded hydrogen. He identified hydrogen in this gas, which is necessary for something to burn. Oxygen? Oxygen, that's right, indeed. Good red, go. Um, <clears throat> let's get physical for 20. Let's get physical for 20 points. Teams, 99% of the matter in this universe is made of this substance that has the same name as the liquid part of your blood and some types of television screens. Judith e. Hoyer. Veins? No. Say it. Veins. What are veins? you saying, Alex? Veins. Not veins, no. The liquid part of your blood has what same name as what 99% of the universe is made of. It's called plasma. Plasma, as in plasma screens, plasma in your blood. No points, 160 to 110, still points to give away. All the big ones are available yet. Go red. Um, Omar, body your systems choice. For 25. Body systems body for 25. Body assistance for 25 points. All right, teams, two-part answer. Last year, it was a horrible thing to witness. Washington Redskin quarterback Alex Smith suffered a terrible break. Both of his lower leg bones were broken. I'll give you the 25 points if you can name both bones that you find in your lower um, leg. Easy. I need them both. Beacon Heights, talk among yourselves in case I have to come to you. Remember, I will need both bones pronounced properly in the lower leg. All right? Achilles? So, no, not Achilles. No, no. That's a good try. Achilles is actually a tendon. Beacon Heights, any idea what the two bones would be? Um, shin and socket? Uh, shin is close. It's called the tibia and the fibula. The tibia and the fibula are the two bones. Go again, red. Um, 
Body systems for 20. Body systems for 20 points. All right, teams, you cannot go to school in Prince George's County in yes, unless you get the vaccination known as Tdap, which stands for tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis. Pertussis has another name. It's known as this kind of cough. What kind of cough is another name for pertussis, Omar? Strep throat. Not strep throat. No, it's a certain kind of cough. Another name for pertussis is this kind of cough. The Tdap shot. Steven. Uh, missiles? Whooping cough. Whooping cough is the answer there. Go again, red. That's why they're tough questions. That's why they're worth 25. Go, Omar. Um, Zubrate for 25. Zubrate for 25. Let's go for the big one that time. This is a visual question. Look at the monitor, please, in the studio, all of you. Great Smoky Mountain National Park in Tennessee is known as the capital of these amphibians because there are more of these kinds of amphibians at the Smoky Mountains, in the Smoky Mountains, than anywhere else on Earth. What kind of amphibian is this for 25 points? Beacon Heights. Salamander. You got that right. The salamander capital of the world. Go red. Um, hold on, hold on. Try your buzzer. It works. If they have already rang it, it will cut out. Try it again. All right. Okay. Omar, try yours. Okay. All right. Now, Omar, try yours again. All right. Now, leave it up there. Leave it up there. All right. Now, see if you can ring in. No. See, because that one's already, the circuit is already, so you can't do that, Steve. All right. Let's get back to the game. Uh, red team, uh, your advantage. Omar, you go. Um, body system for five. Body system for five points. Teams, sometimes kids like you come onto the science bowl and they are so nervous, they break into a cold what? Judith Hoyer. Cold-hearted. Um, heart? Nope, nope. Sometimes they're so nervous they get on science bowl, they break into a cold what? Fever? S sweat, sweat. You were close. Go again, red. Um, Where next, Omar? Science for 20. Which one? Science potpourri for 20. Potpourri for 20 points. All right. Let's see how good spelling spellers you are. The panda at the National Zoo, everybody always wants to know, is she pregnant? Is she pregnant? Sometimes she is, but sometimes she has a pseudo-pregnancy, which is a fake pregnancy. I'm going to give you the first letter. It's a P. If you can spell the prefix. Okay, Omar. P-S-E-U-D-O. That's it. That's it. P-S-E-U-D-O is the pseudo part of pseudo pregnancy. Go again. Um, let's get physical for 25. Let's get physical for 25 points. Teams, an airplane, as it goes through the sky, has to overcome a lot of forces because the opposite force to thrust is what force that pulls it Back, Pull. Not quite, not, not quite, nope. The opposite of thrust is what force that tends to keep it back. Turbulence? Drag, drag oh. is what we were looking for there. Go red. Go ahead. Uh, science potpourri for five. Potpourri for five points. Teams, the only rock that we humans eat is the condiment that we shake on our food. Omar. Um, salt. Salt, that's it. N-A-C-L. Good. Red, go. Um, Dateline science for 25. Dateline for 25 points. Teams, there is good news. This E-initialed disease spread by a virus that is moving through the Congo. Omar? Ebola. Ebola. That's it. Yes, sir. Oh, boy, you are hot today. Red team, looks like they have done it. We'll be back with a wrap-up and a final score in just a moment. Don't you go away. And welcome back to Science Bowl. What a game. What a second half we had here. Let's check that final tally. Judith P. Hoyer, 110. Beacon Heights, 235. Let's congratulate Jaime and Omar and Kaylin. Back there, we have Hector and Victoria and Anna, Mr. Brown, and Miss Lila Walker. The principal of Beacon Heights is right here today. And let's have a nice round of applause for that Judy Hoyer team. Alex and Stephen and Elisa. Also, we've got Justin back there, Cheryl Strong, that wonderful Teacher of the Year. Thank you all for being here. We will see you next time on another edition of Science Bowl. Till then, I'm Dave Zarin. Bye-bye.